Hello. We're here today at the Fit Show. This is our first Fit Show and we're very glad to be here. And we'd like to welcome you to the installation demo of our M-Glaze Skyview Lantern Roof Light. Um, some of you might th be thinking, white cells, who are they and what are they doing here? We haven't, we haven't heard of them before in the fenestration industry. And you'd be absolutely right. Um, we've been big for about 35 years now in the commercial roof light um, sector. Uh, we do a lot of big glass roof lights and polycarb roof lights on schools, prisons, um, shopping centres. Um, but this is our first entry into the fenestration industry. The reason why we're here is because we've identified that there are lots of really good manufacturers of windows and doors in the industry that don't do roof lights. They supply roof lights because it's the final sort of piece of the jigsaw puzzle to their repertoire. Um, but they're often buying in roof lights from their competitors. Um, other people that do windows and doors and, roof, and manufacture roof lights. Um, but it's a bit of a conflict of interest there because their competitors, they're buying from them and it doesn't sit very comfortably. Well, we're not in that market. We are solely roof lights. We have no plans to join the windows and door market. Um, we know roof lights very, very well. We've done it for many years, and we're only here to, to, to bring to the market a domestic roof light for you guys to see with no conflict of interest with you, your client base. I've got my colleagues here, Pierce and Glenn. Um, they're gonna do the practical demonstration today, and I'm just gonna talk you guys through it as we go through the stages. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to jump in. Uh, we will open it up to a Q&A afterwards. Um, we'll feel free to come out and have a look and, and ask any questions. Um, so the guys are going to start now with installing the base frame. Now, like with any installation of any kind, you know, not telling you how to suck eggs, read the manufacturer's instructions, um, check that you've got all the components that are listed on the parts list, all that usual stuff. Obviously, make sure that the, the roof upstand is the correct size to what you're expecting to fit the roof light. Um, and the normal procedures with roof light upstands apply with, you know, the kerb needs to be 150 mil high to meet building regulations um, and the waterproofing membrane for this system would need to go up the outside of the kerb, across the top of the kerb and then when the roof light sits on top of the waterproofing membrane it becomes one sealed system with the roof. So as you can see now the guys are installing or assembling the base profile. Now the base profile just links together with two cleats like this in each corner. It's very, very simple. And the easiest method that we find to do it is to pre-assemble the cleats into the shorter sections. It's easier then just to slide the short sections onto the long sections um, and then put the rest of the screws in and everything all lines up. You'll see that they've just peeled back the rubbers here. This rubber just exposes the pre-drilled holes for the fixing holes for the cleats to sit into. Um, once all the, the roof light has been positioned, they will just go back in and just relocate those rubbers. Um, all the holes that you see here, this is as it would be leaving the factory, so all the holes fixed for fixing the roof right down to the kerb, it's all pre-drilled in the factory, any location holes, you know, there's no pre-drilling to do with this system, everything's done for you. As you can see, very basic tools needed, uh, cordless drill or an impact driver, whichever you prefer. Um, all of the fixings that you'll see to assemble the frame are just standard PH2 fixings. Um, and then the only other bit we use is we use a 50mm hex head screw, a 10mm hex head screw, to secure the, the kerb down to the upstand. How's it looking? Good. Um, so now the guys are going to lift the, the base frame onto the what would be the upstand. Um, because this roof light has got to be assembled and disassembled so many times, we're not going to do any wet applications today, but normally you would flip that up on its back, run a bead of silicon around the, out, uh, the underneath, and then bed that down on silicon um, to be your final seal between the waterproof and membrane and the roof light. Um, again, not telling anyone how to suck eggs, but when you're using a silicon application, uh, make sure you use the right silicon that's low modulus if you're using a felt roof. If you don't use a low modulus silicon and you pick the wrong tube out of your bag um, and you use, for example, a bathroom silicon, that will react with membranes, certainly felt, and it will cause it to break down um, and almost melt um, any bitumen. So make sure you're using the right, the right um, products. As you can see here now, the guys are securing the upstand down to the kerb. We're only going to put in eight screws for this demonstration. There's no point in putting in 22 uh, and the impact driver is quite noisy. But as you can see, the, it's a nice fixing that won't round off. So if you do need to take them in and out, um, they're very easy. And what they have is a, is a colour-coded fixing that just clips on once that's done. 
Um, and when you're looking from the outside, it looks, you know, they're, they're almost non-visible because they just blend in with the roof light. The roof light comes in three colours, so it's in white, grey or black. Um, and we also do um, grey on white, so you can have white on the inside, grey on the outside, so it blends in with your roof membrane exterior, externally, and then white internally to go with the inter interior decor. Um, regardless of what the um, colour of the roof light is, you will have colour coded um, caps to match. Um, the guys are now going to assemble the the um, rafters, and this is best done, you know, beside the roof light. When you're doing this, make sure you protect your working area. You don't want to be having, you know, points of the, the bars digging into your roof membrane. So put a sheet of ply down, protect the area, uh, and just make sure you're looking after the surfaces. Um, so these, the, the internal cleats are already pre-mounted in the factory, and you literally just slide the hip rafters on and fix them with the short screws that are described in the instructions, like the guys are doing now. Whilst the guys are doing that, um, sorry to bore you, but a little bit of health and safety. When you guys are working at height, you know, predominantly this roof light is in the domestic market and the CDM regulations don't apply. Um, but at the end of the day, we all want to go, we've all got loved ones at home, wives, kids, loved ones that we want to get home to. We want to be working safely. Um, unless your wife nags as much as mine, then you might not want to go home. But regardless, let's make sure we've got all your edge protection in place, crash decks in place. You know, let's tick all the right boxes. We don't want to be having any accidents on site. So once the, the, the frame is installed as a skeleton, we can then lift it up and place it onto the upstand. And this literally just sits straight into the corners there. Um, so it's all pre-cut, pre-measured, it'll just slot straight into place. And then the, the bottom of the rafter is just fixed down to the curb with some short little grub screws. Again, all your fixings are clearly labelled on the instructions, so it's really impossible to use the wrong fixings for the wrong areas, because everything is clearly labelled on the front page of our installation manuals, um, and you really can't go wrong. Put it this way, these guys have got no qualifications whatsoever as roof light installers. Their, their only qualifications are pushing pens around the office. Um, Glenn installed this system for the first time on Friday. Uh, I know we say in the instruction manual is 40 minutes. If it's taken you 40 minutes, the truth is you've had too long a tea break in between. Because Glenn did it in sort of 10, 11 minutes on Friday. So it is that simple to install. Um, there's nothing to be afraid of. Um, you know, even the, the average handyman could install this quite comfortably with basic tools. Even if you haven't got drills, you could install it with screwdrivers if you're that way inclined. If any of you guys are fabricators and, and, and are interested in partnering with White Cells, then you know, we've got a full suite of support that we can help you guys with. We can have you come to our factory, we can do personal demonstrations, we can break this down for you guys and get you to see all the little inscript bits. Um, you know, we've got a full suite of support that we can do for you guys. If you're interested in partnering with us, um, you know, come and speak to us. We're on stand 31, just inside the, the main entrance there. The irony is that if you look around all the stands, it looks to be a sea of white everywhere. And even though we've got white in our name, our stand's blue, okay? So just look out for the big blue stand. Something that might also interest you is we do have a bar, okay? So even if, even if roof blows aren't your thing, come and have a chat with us. You'll see me later on. Someone has got roped into being bar manager as well, and I can pour a good pint. So come and see us later on. Stand E31, just inside that doorway there. Um, we're also hosting a networking event this evening, and it would be great to see as many of you guys there as possible. Come and have a chat. Say we've got soft drinks, um, lagers, cocktails. Uh, we'll be very, very glad to see you. What well, you can see the guys are doing now, they're just inserting the thermal brakes. Um, these thermal brakes stop um, cold bridging from the outside to the inside. Um, but they also act as a receiving house for the pressure caps that we'll show you shortly. These just sit into place, they clip into the channel, and then they're located with a couple of 50mm PH2 head screws just to hold them into place.
The only other tool we recommend for installing these lanterns are a rubber mallet. If you've got a rubber mallet, just make sure it's a rubber mallet that doesn't leave marks. This is a non-marking mallet. So when you're hammering the, the pressure caps on, which you'll see shortly, you, it won't leave marks. We'll have to go belt and brace. If we do use a little block of wood as well, most of you will have a normal hammer in your bags. Hammer and timber is fine for, for installing the pressure caps. All good? Yep. Good. So the, the thermal brakes are now in place and the guys are now ready to, to put the glass into place. With our systems, the glass comes, gets delivered to site with the framework. So there's no risk of you know, framework turning up and not knowing where the glass is. You'll know that when our system arrives, it's you know, all fully checked in the box. Everything's going to be there. The glass is going to be there. Um, so you guys can just get on and install. Whoever's installed, just crack on, get the install done and not have to worry about not having any glass or, or things being delayed. What you'll see with the glass, these, the bottom channels that cover the bottom of the glass, they also hold the bottom of the glass into place. They're pre-installed in the factory. So that's one less thing that you guys have got to do on site. You literally just lower the glass down, locate the bottom channels to just clip into place, and that is the glass uh, preliminary secured until the pressure caps go on. This glass is quite lightweight. Um, you can, you know, one person could as easily manage that piece of glass, but yeah, we like to be as safe and uh, as practical as possible. Two guys, one on each end, just avoids knocking the corners or cracking the glass. But the glass is very lightweight. It's a four mil, four mil, tough and tough and glass spec. Um, there's going to be another revision of this system coming out in the coming months where, where we're incorporating an internal laminate layer. Um, which is going to be a safety glass, um, so look out for that. And one thing that we will be adding to the range as well, um, there's a timber upstand, you can see one over there with our flat glass units. Um, we've got that, that's a fully certified Part L compliant upstand. We will be bringing that system to this range as well. Um, so you can get an upstand from us, fix the upstand down to your roof, waterproof it in, and it's fully compliant and then the, the, the roof light is made to measure to go straight on top. So the guys are now just installing the caps. The first cap that needs to go on is the ridge cap. And as you can see, you just need to centralise it. And that will then be the finished position for the, for the hip caps. Now the hip caps, don't worry about trying to put them in right at the ridge cap because you will end up scratching it. You can leave them down a little bit, tap them into place with a mallet. And then once they're down and secured, you can just tap them up from the ends, just so this joint finishes nicely around the tops. The system's fully tested for uh, wind and water and snow loads, um, so you've got no problems with you know, driving rain or anything like that. It's fully certified and tested by an independent test house, uh, the BRE, uh, based in Oxford Pierce. Yeah. Yeah, so. Like I said, we are Stand E31. We'll be glad to see as many of you with us later on as possible. We've got a jazz musician there, we've got food on the stand, teas, coffees, lager, cocktails, vodka, whiskey. Um, we did have a couple of guys there yesterday that enjoyed the whiskey a little bit too much, so uh, we're trying to you know, get everyone involved as much as possible. We're trying not to get too involved, make sure you can still walk home afterwards. We are looking for market feedback as well, so when you guys come and see this today, you know, we have got some more revisions of this system coming out. Um, we are looking for feedback on things like the caps. If there's things that you think we could do better, you know, we're a very responsive company, and we, we like to take feedback that, that the marketplace has, um, and we're happy to bring in adaptions into place um, to sort of make any improvements, you know, just to fulfil the customer's needs. Done. So that's it done. So that's done. Uh, I, I mean, we weren't timing it, but I'm guessing it's sort of... 15, 20 minutes, um, going nice and slow, but that, that's our finished product. We're going to leave it here for a few minutes, and if you guys want to come in close to have a look, fantastic. The guys will answer any questions you have. 
Um, we're going to disassemble it uh, at the end of the play today, and we'll be back over there for tomorrow's um, demonstration. You know, don't kick us too hard if there's scratches and stuff. This has been up and down more times than the pyramid stage at Glastonbury. Um, so just forgive us a little bit. But yeah, open the floor up to any questions. Any questions? Any installers here? Anyone that's installed roof lights before? Yes, sir. Are you going to have an opening version at all? There will be at some stage, yeah. We haven't got that at the moment. Yeah. Um, it, I'm not gonna, it was a bit of a rush to get this ready for the fit show. Obviously, we've invested heavily as a company. I've put a lot of time and effort into, into getting ready for today. There will be an opening section coming. I don't know when yet, uh, but you can certainly look out for that. Um, our marketing team are brilliant, so even when it's on the cards and you know getting close to coming to market, yeah, you'll know about it. Um, so yeah, keep keep communicating with us. Let us know who you are. Come and see us. We'll get your details and we'll keep you updated if you're interested. Yeah, um, um, but just because we, we are looking to partner with fabricators. We are a roof light manufacturer, and we want to partner with yeah, window and door fabricators yeah, as their trusted roof light yeah, manufacturer. Is there, uh, we yeah, we do. Uh, we don't have any finials for here yet because they're not really needed. But we, again, we are looking for market feedback to see. You know, there are people out there that do finials. Some people don't. Some people like them. Some people don't like them. Then they're, they're not required. You know, this is fully tested for water and driving rain, so it's not needed for, for, from a weathering perspective. Um, but if the marketplace likes them and they want some sort of decorative, you know, if you want to go down a more heritage route, we're happy to take the feedback. But from a, from a performance point of view, it's not required. Um, we are looking to, you know, this is our, we are looking to change these details and make them a bit more slimline. So, you know, this is a, a, an entry level system. It's great for the market, great value, very, very much fit for purpose. Um, but, you know, over the coming weeks and months, we'll be looking to take it to the next level uh, and, and welcome any feedback that you guys have. Sorry, yeah, I did. Like I said, we don't do any wet silicon. When those thermal brakes go in, you do silicon, there's like a Y there where they all meet. You do a, a silicon joint there, and then any water that would get in there just comes down the drainage channels. But I say, we can't do any wet applications today because we've got to take it down. I'm glad, I, I wasn't there to see the whole thing. How does it go together? Got the cleat there? It's going to be available from just like... Very 